what's up you guys today i am back with another video and i'm starting a brand new series here on my channel um i did announce it on my instagram so hey what's up you guys today i am back with another video and i'm starting a brand new series here on my channel um i did announce it on my instagram as i was doing my research i sort of realized that there is a lot of traditional studies obviously that are very well known and famous um, and most of them are conducted by males, white middle-aged males normally. I wanted to sort of do a series that sort of recognise women in psychology. To start off with I'm gonna do someone who is really well you probably might have heard of her but she's really well known in the psychology um, and forensic psychology in particular and her name is Elizabeth Loftus and she is like literally incredible. So first I'm going to start with a little bit of information about her and she was born in LA in 1944 and she originally got her PhD in psychology at Stanford University so already <laughs> we're going to like a big uni um very well known especially in the psychology area a lot of like famous experiments Stanford prison experiment um based in Stanford so yeah really good uni. She is based in sort of the cognitive psychology approach. Her main focus and her main reason for being such a huge researcher is because of her work on eyewitness testimony and memory and courtroom procedures. And her basic theory is that memories can change and they can be altered. Our perceptions of what happened in events can be altered by things like leading questions. Things like post-event information can affect how you remember something. And that's basically what her research is based around and I'll go through a study a little bit later that demonstrates that. She has worked on some pretty high profile cases being an expert witness which is pretty incredible. She's worked on the Michael Jackson case, um, a case for a NFL player Ray Lewis and also the Weinstein case most recently I think. So she's also written a lot of books um, which you can check out, I'm gonna link them below, but she did get a national media award for one of her books, Eyewitness Testimony. Um, it's just that sort of eyewitnesses cannot be 100% reliable and that's really important to note um, in cases because if a whole case is based on one eyewitness testimony then that is not enough to um, really be convicting someone when they have been through you know they've been through the police they've been questioned all that process of talking to all those people and what those people are all saying to a witness will affect what the outcome is now i'm going to go on to talk to you about her awards there's so many <laughs> that i just like couldn't remember them to like tell you right now but um so she got the 1984 president of the western psychological association and she was the past president of the American Psychological Society and has a award of distinguished contributions to forensic psychology from American Academy of Forensic Psychology. <laughs> and then she got the William James Fellow Award for research for the American Psychological Society. So major contributions to forensic and psychology in general. Um, which is amazing and then in 2013 she got the gold medal award for life achievement in the science of psychology from the american psychological foundation and yeah just wanted to really highlight that because you know it's it's not like i'm just you know picking women who like have research but they haven't made significant contributions because there can be misconceptions that there just aren't many women psychologists, there's not many that like do amazing research, but there really is. <laughs> and that's basically proof of that. But to start with, um, how she sort of came to research in this area is quite an unfortunate story, but her mother unfortunately died um, in a drowning accident when I believe she was 14 at the time, which is really horrible. And on her 44th birthday, apparently, her uncle was talking about the event and Loftus, she couldn't remember um, what had happened. And her uncle said, maybe that's because you were the person that found her body. And, you know, that's quite a horrible thing to experience. And she suddenly sort of started remembering the event. Her uncle then, I think, called her and was like, actually, it was your aunt that found your mum's body. 
and she had remembered herself finding the body. So it just sort of showed her that like how easily memories can be changed or memories can be implanted into someone's head with false information. And she sort of came up with the, she did a lot of work into the misinformation effect and also the discrepancy detection principle. And then there's also this obvious um, issue that we have with our memories where your brain will often try to fill in the gaps of what has happened. You tend to remember things that you would expect to happen. The experiment that I'm going to go through with you is the 1974 Loftus and Palmer experiment and they were looking into how leading questions can affect eyewitness testimony and they basically did an experiment, well they did two. And the first one was they showed video clips of um, car accidents and afterwards they were asked to explain what happened and then they were given a questionnaire with a few various questions but there was only really one that they were really looking at. The question was about how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other and not everyone got that verb smashed. And they were looking at how these different words would affect people's perceptions of how fast the cars were going. The participants that had the question about how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other, um, they reported higher speed estimates than the other conditions and they estimated this speed at an average of 40.8 miles per hour. Whereas the ones that got the question about how fast were the cars going when they contacted each other, um, they only estimated it at 31.8 miles per hour. Their first explanation was that the verb could have just affected their perception of the speed in terms of miles per hour. If it said smash, they might have thought that they were going faster. But the second um, explanation was that it could have been the verb changing the person's perception of the event and what happened. So it could have been that they saw that word smashed and they actually recalled the crash differently and the second experiment they had 150 participants and they were shown a four, four second multiple car accident they had a questionnaire with all the different questions and then they had about how fast were the cars going when they hit each other and then about how fast the cars were going when they smashed into each other um so that kind of stayed very similar to the original um, experiment that I just talked about um, but just with hit or smashed um, and there was an, a control group where there was no question at all asked so they weren't asked that question um, and one week later there was a follow-up questionnaire and this is what makes it different from the first experiment is that they were asked um, within a full questionnaire did you see any broken glass um, and there wasn't actually any broken glass in the car crash that they were shown so most of the participants said that they didn't see the glass, um, which shows that most people were right. But there was a few people, um, quite a few people, that said they, they did see the glass. Of those that saw the broken glass, 16 um, were from the smashed condition, that like given the smashed variable, compared to just 7 um, who saw the broken glass when they were given the hit variable, and 6 for the control group. There was a significant difference between those that got given the question about how fast the cars were going when they smashed each other compared to the question when they hit each other. So that shows that that particular variable and the adjective used did affect um, their perception of the event and that they saw broken glass um, that was more frequent that they saw the broken glass in that smashed condition. And why is it that that happened and their explanation was that um, getting that question did you see any broken glass when that's paired with that adjective that they got after the event um, they couldn't really distinguish between the true event of what actually happened and the information they'd got given so it sort of blurs into one and they perceived the event differently so they perceived the cars as going faster than they actually were and um, perceived them as there as being broken glass um, when there wasn't. This is just all my opinion now, this is not like facts or anything, but in my opinion, um, not having that emotional reaction makes it more easy to distinguish between what's real and not. If it's not 
something that you've actually seen and you you don't have that emotion behind it then I think it would be easier to know what actually happened and not be affected so much by those sorts of questions um so I feel like if it was done with like a real car crash and someone had actually seen a car crash all that emotions and stuff would make them more vulnerable to changing their memories so to finish with I just wanted to um, speak a little bit about how that sort of experiment works in the real world and how if you imagine eyewitness testimony when you see something happen you could see something horrible happen a crime you know it's gonna you're very vulnerable to sort of the emotions and things that come with that experience and this is a misconception that especially with children in testimony um but also in adults um you can sort of make things up sometimes that you think make sense of what happened you've got to uh, think that people are not reliable and that's what Loftus um, was trying to show in these sorts of research that she did they're not like purposefully you know giving incorrect evidence they're not trying to you know um, say anything that's not true it's just that they actually genuinely have perceived it a different way I think that's a lot of the work that she does being an expert witness is uh, going to courts and relaying how um, things are not always reliable and witnesses may not be reliable that was just a little bit about Elizabeth Loftus so that was my first in the series of women in psychology I really hope that you enjoyed this video and this series and give it a like if you are supporting um, this series and follow my Instagram to stay updated with what's happening on my channel so yeah thank you and I'll see you in my next video bye